So finally, we're gonna reveal the truth of video editing on this new MacBook Pro. What is up guys and welcome to my new video. It's always me, Johnny. And today we are gonna see the performance of the new MacBook Pro with the M1 chip from Apple. In specific, we're gonna see the performance on the video editing side of this device. And actually I did some tests with the most used uh, softwares or, or maybe I have to say application for Mac that are for uh, video editing that actually are uh, Premiere Pro, of course, because I use Premiere Pro. So this is the first software that I've tried on this new device. And then also DaVinci Resolve because it's one of the software that sometimes I use it also on my Windows machine for color grading and, and sometimes for a, like a light editing stuff. And also because this one is one of the first application that runs natively on the M1 chip. And last one, I've tried also Final Cut Pro because this one is actually the very best of all for the optimization stuff. And so I have to try this one too. Actually, I never used Final Cut Pro because I've never had a Mac. And when I used a Mac in the past, I just edit my videos with the Havid. You can learn about my story in the previous video. So go check out my latest video. And also I didn't just test only the video editing software or application. I tested also two of the most used application for uh, photo editing stuff. And these are uh, Photoshop, of course, and Lightroom. But without wasting any time, just go into the video and let's see what this new MacBook Pro can do. Watch all the video to know anything on this topic. So in this video, I'm gonna start from the worst on the performance side and we are gonna end on the best on the performance side talking about edit video editing. So to start, unfortunately, I have to say that uh, the worst on the performance side, it's uh, Premiere Pro because as I said also in my previous videos, it's actually not yet optimized for the M1 chip from Apple. So it does run well, but you have to consider that it runs through the uh, translator, we can say, that is uh, Rosetta 2.0 it's actually taking a lot of resources from this device. So the application doesn't run quite well. I mean, if it was running like natively on this chip, I can bet it will be like a thousand times better. But for now it is not. And so the performance are not too bad. I mean, it's kind of good for this type of machine. But for example, I found something very strange and in specific with my GH5S files because um, with this camera, I don't know if it's the codec, if it's the software or maybe the optimization thing, I cannot edit any video that are like in 4K, for example, or maybe if they are just like in 1080p, but if they are uh, 10 bit 422, it doesn't run smooth. I mean, it's just very laggy and actually it just stops within seconds. So maybe if you edit very slow, you can work on that, but it's pretty much unusable. And this is actually with the lower quality, so a quarter of quality and also without any effects or color grading or anything applied. So I don't know. And I told you there is a strange thing because if I just import some files from the red cinema camera, that you can find on their website. It runs actually smooth. I mean, not at full resolution. It's an 8K file from the Red Monstro and it's a full frame camera. So it has a lot of detail and the dynamic range, it's just insane. But I didn't have any problem with those files. It starts to lag only with the half resolution. So if I put that file a quarter of resolution, it runs like smoothly, but my files didn't run so smoothly. So I don't know what it is, but I hope they can fix these things. And also with the red file, I just applied some LUTs and some effects and it still runs good. So if you have a similar problem, maybe just type down in the comment and let me know maybe if you have a solution or maybe if I did something wrong, just let me know in the comments. Then I've tried also DaVinci Resolve, as I said before, and this application runs uh, natively on the M1 chip. And actually every time, pretty much every time I open up 
this application, it has some updates because I'm still running the beta version of the DaVinci Resolve. So they actually are working on it. So they put some updates like frequently. This is very good because they are resolving um, so many problems. Here, as I was saying, you have a little bit different uh, experience because the software is more fluid and you can edit pretty much anything on it. You can do also colors on your files because it will handle those files very good. I mean, sometimes you have some lags and the clip is going like uh, lower than 30 or maybe 25 FPS. So you can see that is laggy, but uh, you can work on it. It's not like uh, Premiere Pro. And here also I have some issues because I couldn't import some of my media files that are from from this camera too. So I don't know if if stills here, it's my problem or maybe it's a problem of the application or maybe it's a problem of the M1 chip, I don't know. But some files works and some other just didn't work. Maybe sometimes it's just importing the audio and that's it. And sometimes didn't import anything. And here also I have imported some uh, red footage, the same one. It runs uh, with a little bit of lag, but it's almost full resolution. So I think it's pretty good. And I think you can work smoothly in every 1080 and 4K videos on DaVinci Resolve. For the last bit of video editing, I've tried also Final Cut Pro that I never used. So as I said before, I never used this application. I'm not familiar with it, but the experience on it, it's just all the contrary to the others, because here it runs smoothly pretty much anything. I didn't have any problem with my footage from this camera or uh, from other cameras, but the only problems here is that it cannot import the red footage. I don't know if there is some conversion tool or stuff like that for a Final Cut, maybe some plugin that I don't know the existence of, but I didn't know how to import those files. So I don't know how it runs on Final Cut Pro, but I can tell you that my 4K, that my 4K files of this camera that are like 400 megabit per second in 4K 422 and in 10 bit, it runs like a uh, butter smooth. So I think if you work with Final Cut Pro, you will not have pretty much any problem to work with any file in the market right now, we can say, because if it can run those type of files, this kind of smooth, it's pretty impressive, let me tell you, because sometimes it's just smoother than my desktop PC that, as you could see in my previous video, it's very powerful. So if you work with this kind of file or maybe you have a similar camera to mine, you have no problem. You will have zero problem with this. I'm sure of it. Then I will give you my two cents on the photo editing softwares that are Photoshop and Lightroom. They also are from the Adobe package. so. These two are also not optimized yet for the M1 chip, but I can say you can work on pretty much anything with these softwares. I mean, I didn't test it for heavy usage and I didn't load it with uh, heavy images or heavy work, but I don't do that stuff uh, pretty often on Photoshop and Lightroom. So I couldn't test it for those type of files of heavy files, we can say but I've tested with several files on Lightroom and some basic editing stuff on Photoshop and I didn't have any problem at all. So they are actually pretty stable. Also, if, if they are running uh, through the translator, we can say, but it runs pretty good. I also used it for uh, applying some LUTs in Lightroom and some basic editing and some masks in Photoshop and photo composing and editing. I just didn't have any problems with it. If you are working with some heavy files and maybe if you are doing like heavy work on Photoshop and Lightroom and if you use this device, let me know if you have any problems with it. Just type down in the comment. We will talk about it and maybe I can explain it better on another video. I don't know, but for now I can tell you that pretty much any, uh, we can say normal user, you will not have any problem with these two softwares. So for the last thing, I will just put some render times with every application that I mentioned. And actually I will show you render time also of Rent Monstro clips and also my uh, GH5S clips. I will render some of my heaviest file of this camera and some of the uh, lowest maybe. And you will see the results here. 
and you can judge yourself how much time take this device to render those files out. So this video wasn't actually trying to demonstrate anything. I'm here just to tell you how it works on this different application. And this is my personal experience. So if you have a different experience, please let me know in the comment. And now I hope you have an idea on the video editing stuff and maybe also photo editing stuff on these new devices. And I hope you like it. And if you did, just leave a like right down below. And if you haven't subscribed already, just consider subscribing because you will not miss any other videos from this channel. So that was it. And I will see you in my next video. Bye for now.